हेलो वीवर्स वेलकम टू दिस यूट्यूब चैनल दिस इज द सेकेंड लेक्चर ऑफ फ्रैक्शनल कैलकुलस कोर्स इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी स्टडीड द आइडिया बिहाइंड फ्रैक्शनल कैलकुलस एंड वी ड्राइव वन फार्मूला टू कैलकुलेट फ्रैक्शनल डिविटिव ऑफ अ फंक्शन एंड वी सॉल्व वन एग्जा टू एग्जाम्पल्स Uh, in which we calculated half our derivative of x and then half our derivative of a constant and we also investigated the formula and we saw that that formula was not quite good for fractional differentiation okay uh, in this lecture we will drive another formula uh, by using the basic idea we, we already know in in classical calculus so if we have a function y is equal to f of x Uh, and we have two points a and b neighboring points and this point here is x and this point is x and the neighboring point is some distance below if i take distance between point a and point b h so this point is x minus h normally we take that this point on the right hand side of this point and and hence this point becomes a positive one but that's not a, uh, it doesn't matter uh, that is called forward uh, definition and here i use the backward definition they have the same meaning uh, since we know that the derivative of a function basically the slope of a uh, tangent line so the line between these two points if i find the slope of these two points slope which is ratio of rise over 1 so uh, the difference between the heights heights is f of x if it is x the height is f of x f of x minus f of x minus h this is difference of heights and then difference in lengths this length and this whole length from this point to this point and divide by this length so it is x minus x minus h which cancels out and only h is here this is the standard definition of simple derivative i just took the backward instead of forward definition so this is we already know that so if we extend this definition to some general order nth order and then we replace n by some arbitrary number and then we see that what formula we get okay so now take another derivative if i take second derivative f double prime of x using the same definition it becomes here it was f prime and both were simple functions and here i have since double prime for here it becomes f prime of x minus f prime of x minus h over h i just replace f prime by f double prime so here we see that if i use f prime of x same definition here and if i modify this definition for this and plug the value here this becomes limit h goes to 0 and f prime of x it has the same definition so it becomes f of x minus f of x minus h over h and limit since the same limit i took it outside no need to write again and again is the same limit here and then minus this one and minus f prime x minus h we have this definition for x so need to replace x by x minus h so this becomes f of x minus h and minus if i raise this one minus f of x minus so we need to replace x by x minus h here it was already 1h so it becomes x minus 2h and whole over h and then we have one or whole over h uh, we can write it here so i just use this definition twice in this definition and by simplifying limit h goes to 0 uh, we can take this h common and here is all the one so this becomes 1 over h square and here f of x minus f of x minus h and minus f of x minus h this becomes 2 of x minus h and minus minus plus f of x minus 2h this one this is the double prime of x so we can see a pattern here from here to here here one and one their uh, signs are alternating plus minus here plus minus plus and it means in the third derivative the same pattern will follow for the coefficients we see that 
uh, here both coefficients are 1 here 1 2 and 1 and these are the binomial coefficients next would be 1 3 3 and 1 so, uh, and then finally from x it is x then 1 h x minus h and x h is being subtracted one time and x is being subtracted two times so in the th third derivative one there was one more term which is x minus 3 h so for third derivative one can calculate this becomes limit h goes to 0 1 over and again here since it was second derivative for h, h square but here this is third derivative so h cube and here f of x minus 3 f of x minus h and then plus plus minus plus again 3 f of x minus 2 h and minus f of x minus 3 h. So, you can check that when you use this definition and this definition for third order this will take this form and these are the binomial coefficients. So, we can write in series form this becomes limit h goes to 0 1 over h summation j from 0 to 3 and since they are alternate strength so minus 1 to the power j and then we have uh, binomial coefficients starting from 3 and it have variation from j and then we have f of x minus j h. So, if we open this series from j0 since j0 this is positive j0 3 0 1 which is 1 and for this j0 only f of x here when j is 1 this becomes negative sign here negative sign and j1 1 here 3 c1 which is 3 and then j, uh, for j1 this becomes f of x minus j this term and so on this is just the closed form of this series. So, this helped me to write the general form. So, this was the third derivative and for nth derivative here n is natural number it becomes limit h goes to 0 1 over h to the power n summation j from 0 to instead of 3 here I have n now it becomes n minus 1 to the power j 3 j 3 c j and f of x minus j h. So, this is the nth derivative of a function and now since here n represents an integer positive integer I need to extend this n like I did in the last time to some arbitrary number I call it again alpha. So, I will change it by alpha. So, this becomes f alpha order in uh, derivative limit h goes to 0 1 over h to the power alpha summation j from 0 to n. Here I do not need to write alpha for n because uh, as you can see that this is a series and series variation is always a discrete number j0 and then it will be 1 and 2 and 3 and so on and this must be an integer. So, there is no need to write alpha here n is sufficient so, uh, and then minus 1 to the power j 3 c j f of x minus j h. So, I plugged alpha for n here and and they have only one point sorry here it was sorry uh, here it, it was not 3 uh, actually this is nj and so it becomes alpha j. So, this is the arbitrary derivative of a function uh, and now again there is the same hurdle is here uh, alpha cj we need to fix for arbitrary number which we use here since we know that alpha c j is alpha factorial j factorial alpha minus j factorial and using the gamma function definition which I used last time gamma n is equal to uh, gamma n plus 1 is equal to n factorial. So, this becomes gamma of alpha plus 1 over j factorial and gamma of alpha minus j plus 1. So, using this definition this value of alpha cj I will put it here. So, it becomes
so this becomes we we'll arrive at this result here i just replace alpha cj by its definition involving gamma function here you can see that i left it j factorial as is because here j is a integer so no need to write its gamma function it works fine here okay now if i take x minus a over h equal n if i make this substitution in the above definition and if i observe that whenever h goes to 0 n will go to infinity for constant a and a must be less than x for this condition whenever h goes to 0 n will go to infinity and if i find the value of 1 over h just i need to uh, switch this here so this becomes 1 over h x uh, x minus a over n n over x minus a okay so uh, so this becomes f alpha of x limit n tends to infinity 1 over h which is n over x minus a to the power alpha and then summation j from 0 to n minus 1 to the power j gamma alpha plus 1 over j factorial gamma of alpha minus j plus 1 and here f of x minus j h h we can find h here h x minus a over n so this becomes j over n into x minus a this takes this form after this substitution Uh, this final result is known as Grunewald Letkinov fractional derivative. This limit is known as Grunewald Letkinov fractional derivative or simply gl but you can see that this definition is quite complicated it involves a limit which means this definition will make sense only if this limit exists so we need to find and evaluate this limit for every function which is not an easy job so we need to take some more modification for this definition uh, in the next lecture uh, we will drive one more useful definition of fractional calculus which is known as uh, riemann level fractional integral and we will see that uh, how useful is that definition and we will construct that definition uh, by using this limit form thanks for watching